pröva att stoppa om du tör Hello, this is Brian Tracy and welcome. This program that you're about to hear is for ambitious people who want to get ahead faster. The ideas you're about to learn will save you years of hard work in achieving the goals that are most important to you. If I was only given five minutes to speak to you and I could only convey one thought that would help you to be more successful, I would tell you to write down your goals, make plans to achieve them, and work on your plans every single day. This advice, if you followed it, would be of more help to you than anything else you could ever learn. Many university graduates have told me that this simple concept has been more valuable to them than four years of study. This idea has changed my life and the lives of millions of other people. It will change yours as well. Let's begin with Chapter 1, Unlock Your Potential. Your ability to set goals is the master skill of success. Goals unlock your positive mind and release ideas and energy for goal attainment. Without goals, you simply drift and flow on the currents of life. With goals, you fly like an arrow, straight and true to your target. The truth is that you probably have more natural potential than you could use if you lived 100 lifetimes. Whatever you have accomplished up to now is only a small fraction of what is truly possible for you. One of the rules for success is this. It doesn't matter where you're coming from. All that really matters is where you're going. And where you're going is solely determined by yourself and your own thoughts. Perhaps the greatest discovery in human history is the power of your mind to create almost every aspect of your life. Everything you see around you in the man-made world began as a thought or an idea in the mind of a single person before it was translated into reality. Everything in your life started as a thought, a wish, a hope, or a dream, either in your mind or in the mind of someone else. Your thoughts are creative. Your thoughts form and shape your world and everything that happens to you. The great summary statement of all religions, philosophies, metaphysics, psychology, and success is this. You become what you think about most of the time. Your outer world ultimately becomes a reflection of your inner world and mirrors back to you what you think about. Whatever you think about continuously emerges in your reality. Many thousands of successful people have been asked what it is that they think about most of the time. The most common answer given by successful people is that they think about what they want and how to get it most of the time. Unsuccessful, unhappy people think and talk about what they don't want most of the time. They talk about their problems and worries and who is to blame most of the time. But successful people keep their thoughts and conversation on the topics of their most intensely desired goals. They think and talk about what they want most of the time. Imagine this exercise. You take a homing pigeon out of its roost, put it in a cage, cover the cage with a blanket, put the cage in a box covered with the blanket, and then place the box into a closed truck cab. You can then drive a thousand miles in any direction. If you then open up the truck cab, take out the box, take off the blanket, and let the homing pigeon out of the cage, the homing pigeon will fly up into the air, circle three times, and then fly unerringly back to its home roost a thousand miles away. This is the only creature on earth that has this incredible cybernetic goal-seeking function, except for man. You have the same goal-achieving ability as the homing pigeon, but with one marvelous addition. When you are absolutely clear about your goal, you don't even have to know where it is or how it is to be achieved. By simply deciding what it is you want, you will begin to move unerringly toward your goal and your goal will start to move unerringly toward you. At exactly the right time and in exactly the right place, you and the goal will meet. Mark McCormick in his book, What They Don't Teach You at Harvard Business School, 
tells of a Harvard study conducted between 1979 and 1989. In 1979, the graduates of the MBA program at Harvard were asked, Have you set clear written goals for your future and made plans to accomplish them? It turned out that only 3% of the graduates had written goals and plans. 13% had goals, but they were not in writing. Fully 84% had no specific goals at all, aside from getting out of school and enjoying the summer. Ten years later, in 1989, they interviewed the members of that class again. They found that the 13% who had goals, but which were not in writing, were earning, on average, twice as much as the 84% of students who had had no goals at all. But most surprisingly, they found that the 3% of graduates who had clear written goals when they left Harvard were earning, on average, 10 times as much as the other 97% of graduates altogether. The only difference between the groups was the clarity of the goals they had for themselves when they started out. Goals give you a sense of meaning and purpose. Goals give you a sense of direction. As you move towards your goals, you feel happier and stronger. You feel more energized and effective. You feel more confident and competent in yourself and your abilities. Every step you take toward your goals increases your belief that you can set and achieve even bigger goals in the future. Your inborn potential is extraordinary. You have within you right now the ability to achieve almost any goal that you can set for yourself. Your greatest responsibility to yourself is to invest whatever time is required to become absolutely clear about exactly what it is you want and how you can best achieve it. The greater clarity you have regarding your true goals, the more of your potential you will unleash for good in your life. The starting point of all goal attainment is desire. You must develop an intense, burning desire for your goals if you really want to achieve them. It is only when your desire becomes intense enough that you will have the energy and the internal drive to overcome all the obstacles that will arise in your path as you start towards your goals. The great oil billionaire H.L. Hunt was once asked the secret of success. He replied that success required two things and two things only. First, he said, you must know exactly what it is you want. Most people never make this decision. Second, he said, you must determine the price that you will have to pay to achieve it and then get busy paying that price. Setting goals, working toward them day by day, and ultimately achieving them is the key to happiness in life. Goal setting is so powerful that the very act of thinking about your goals makes you happy, even before you've taken the first step toward achieving them. To unlock and unleash your full potential, you should make a habit of daily goal setting and achieving for the rest of your life. You should develop a laser-like focus so that you are always thinking and talking about the things you want rather than the things that you don't want. You must resolve from this moment on to be a goal-seeking organism like a guided missile or a homing pigeon moving unerringly toward the things that are important to you. Chapter 2. Take Charge of Your Life When I was 21, I was broke and living in a small one-room apartment in the middle of a very cold winter, working on a construction job during the day. I usually couldn't afford to go out of my apartment in the evenings, where at least it was warm, so I had a lot of time to think. One night, as I sat there at my small kitchen table, I had a great flash of awareness. It changed my life. I suddenly realized that Everything that happened to me for the rest of my life was going to be up to me. No one else was ever going to help me. No one was coming to the rescue. I later learned that when you accept complete responsibility for your life, you take the giant step from childhood to adulthood. Sadly enough, most people never do this. I have met countless men and women in their 40s and 50s who are still grumbling and complaining about earlier unhappy experiences, and still blaming their problems on other people and circumstances. 
And many people are still angry about something that one of their parents did or did not do to or for them 20 or 30 or even 40 years ago. They are trapped in the past and they can't get free. The greatest enemies of success and happiness are negative emotions of all kinds. It is negative emotions that hold you down, tire you out, and take away all your joy in life. It is negative emotions from the beginning of time that have done more harm to individuals and societies than all the plagues of history. One of your most important goals, if you want to be truly happy and successful, is to free yourself from negative emotions. And fortunately, this can be done if you learn how. The negative emotions of fear, self-pity, envy, jealousy, feelings of inferiority, and ultimately anger are mostly caused by four factors. The first of the four root causes of negative emotions is justification. You can only be negative as long as you can justify to yourself and others that you are entitled to be angry or upset for some reason. This is why angry people are continually explaining and elaborating on the reasons for their negative feelings. However, if you cannot justify your negativity, you can't be angry. For example, a person is laid off from a job due to a change in the economy and declining sales in the company. However, the individual is angry with his boss for this decision and justifies his anger by describing all the reasons why his being laid off was unfair. He can even get himself so incensed that he decides to sue or get even in some way. As long as he continues to justify his negative feelings toward his boss and the company, his negative emotions control him and absorb much of his life and thinking. However, as soon as he says, well, I've been laid off, these things happen, it's not personal, people get laid off all the time, I guess I'd better get busy finding a new job. His negative emotions vanish. He becomes calm, clear, and focused on the goal and on the steps he can take to get back into the workforce. As soon as he stops justifying, he becomes a more positive and effective person. The second cause of negative emotions is rationalization. When you rationalize, you attempt to give a socially acceptable explanation for an otherwise socially unacceptable act. You rationalize to explain away or to put a favorable light on something that you have done that you feel bad or unhappy about. You excuse your behavior or actions by creating an explanation that sounds good, even though you know that you were an active agent in whatever occurred. You often create complex ways of putting yourself in the right by explaining that your behavior was really quite acceptable, all things considered. This rationalizing keeps your negative emotions alive. Rationalization and justification always require that you make someone or something else the source or cause of your problem. You cast yourself in the role of the victim and you make the other person or organization into the oppressor or the bad guy. The third cause of negative emotions is an overconcern or hypersensitivity to the way other people treat you. For some people, their entire self-image is determined by the way other people speak to them, talk to them, or about them, or even look at them. They have little sense of personal value or self-worth apart from the opinions of others. And if those opinions are negative for any reason, real or imagined, the victim immediately experiences anger, embarrassment, shame, feelings of inferiority, and even depression, self-pity, and despair. The fourth cause of negative emotions, and the worst of all, is blaming. When I draw the negative emotions tree in my seminars, I illustrate the trunk of the tree as the propensity to blame other people for our problems. Once you cut down the trunk of the tree, all the fruits of the tree, all the other negative emotions, die immediately. From this point forward, see and think about yourself as the master of your own fate. See yourself as completely in charge of your own life. Refuse to whine and complain about things that happened in the past, which cannot be changed. Instead, 
orient yourself toward the future and think of what you want and where you're going. Above all, think about your goals. The very act of thinking about your goals makes you positive and purposeful again. There's a large body of psychological literature that revolves around the concept of locus of control theory. In more than 50 years of research, psychologists have determined that your personal locus of control is the determining factor of your happiness or unhappiness in life. And here's why. A person with an internal locus of control is a person who feels that he or she is in complete control of his or her life. This person feels strong, confident, and powerful. He or she is generally optimistic and positive. He or she feels terrific about him or herself and feels very much in charge of his or her destiny. On the other hand, a person with an external locus of control is a person who feels controlled by external factors, by their boss, their bills, their marriage, their childhood problems, and their current situation. They feel out of control. And as a result, they feel weak, angry, fearful, negative, hostile, and disempowered. The good news is that there is a direct relationship between the amount of responsibility you accept and the amount of control you feel. The more you say, I am responsible, the more of an internal locus of control you develop within yourself and the more powerful and confident you feel. There's also a direct relationship between responsibility and happiness. The more responsibility you accept, the happier you become. It seems that all three, responsibility, control, and happiness, go together. The more responsibility you accept, the greater amount of control you feel you have. The greater amount of control you feel you have, the happier and more confident you become. When you feel positive and in control of your life, you will set bigger and more challenging goals for yourself. You will also have the drive and determination to achieve them. You will feel as if you hold your whole life in your own hands and that you could make it into whatever you decide to. The starting point of goal setting, then, is for you to realize that you have virtually unlimited potential to be, have, or do anything you really want in life if you simply want it badly enough and are willing to work long enough and hard enough to achieve it. The second part of goal setting is for you to accept complete responsibility for your life and for everything that happens to you with no blaming and no excuses. With these two concepts in mind, that you have unlimited potential and that you are completely responsible, you are now ready to move to the next step, which is to begin designing your ideal future. Chapter 3. Create Your Own Future in more than 3,300 studies of leaders conducted over the years, there's a special quality that stands out, one quality that all great leaders have in common. It is the quality of vision. Leaders have vision. Non-leaders do not. Earlier I said that the most important discovery in all of human history is that you become what you think about most of the time. What is it then that leaders think about most of the time? And the answer is that Leaders think about the future and where they are going and what they can do to get there most of the time. We call this leadership quality future orientation. Leaders think about the future and what they want to accomplish and where they want to arrive sometime down the road. Leaders think about what they want and what can be done to achieve it. The good news is that when you begin to think about your future as well, you begin to think like a leader and you will soon get the same results that leaders get. In personal strategic planning, you should begin with a long-term view of your life as well. You should begin by practicing idealization in everything you do. In the process of idealization, you create a five-year fantasy for yourself and begin thinking about what your life would look like in five years if it were perfect in every respect. The biggest single obstacle to setting goals is self-limiting beliefs. These are areas where you believe yourself to be limited in some way. 
you may believe yourself to be inadequate or inferior in areas such as intelligence, ability, talent, creativity, personality, or something else. As a result, you sell yourself short. By underestimating yourself, you set either no goals or low goals that are far below what you are truly capable of accomplishing. By combining idealization and future orientation, you cancel or neutralize this process of self-limitation. You imagine for the moment that you have no limitations at all. You imagine that you have all the time, talents and abilities you could ever require to achieve any goal you could set for yourself. No matter where you are in life, you imagine that you have all the friends, contacts and relationships you need to open every door and achieve anything you could really want. You imagine that you have no limitations whatsoever on what you could be, have or do in the pursuit of the goals that are really important to you. When you practice idealization and future orientation, you make no compromises with your dreams and visions for yourself and your future. You don't settle for smaller goals or half successes. Instead, you dream big dreams and project yourself forward mentally as though you are one of the most powerful people in the universe. You create your perfect future. You decide what you really want before you come back to the present moment and deal with what is possible for you within your current situation. So, start with your business and career. Imagine that your work life was perfect five years from now. Answer these questions. Number one. What would it look like? Number two, if your work life were perfect, what would you be doing? Number three, where would you be doing it? Number four, who would you be working with? What level of responsibility would you have? Five, if you were at the top of your field, what kind of skills and abilities would you have? Number six, what kind of goals would you be accomplishing and number seven, what level of status would you have in your field if your career was perfect sometime in the future? When you answer these questions, imagine that you have no limits. Imagine that everything is possible for you. Imagine that you have a magic slate. That means you can write down anything you want. You can erase anything that may have happened in the past and create whatever picture you desire for your future. You can clean the slate at any time and start over. You have no limits. When you fantasize and imagine your perfect future, the only question you ask is, how? This is the most powerful question of all. Asking the word how repeatedly stimulates your creativity and triggers ideas to help you accomplish your goals. Unsuccessful people always wonder whether or not a particular goal is possible. High achievers, on the other hand, only ask the question, how? They then set to work to find ways to make their visions and goals into realities. When you have clear, exciting goals and ideals, you will feel happier about yourself and your world. You'll be more positive and optimistic. You'll be more cheerful and enthusiastic. You will feel internally motivated to get up and get going every morning because every step you're taking will be moving you in the direction of something that is important to you. Resolve to think about your ideal future most of the time. Remember, the very best days of your life lie ahead. The happiest moments you will ever experience are still to come. The highest income you will ever earn is going to materialize in the months and years ahead. The future is going to be better than anything that may have happened in your past there are no limits. The clearer you can be about your long-term future, the more rapidly you will attract people and circumstances into your life to help make that future a reality. The greater clarity you have about who you are and what you want, the more you will achieve and the faster you will achieve it in every area of your life. Chapter 4. Clarify Your Values One of the most important characteristics of leaders 
and top people in every area of life is that they know who they are, what they believe in, and what they stand for. Average people are usually confused about their goals, values, and ideals, and as a result, they go back and forth and accomplish very little. Men and women who become leaders, on the other hand, with the same or even fewer abilities and opportunities, go on to accomplish great things in whatever they attempt. Life is lived from the inside out. The very core of your personality is your values. Your values are what make you the person you are. Everything you do on the outside is dictated and determined by your values on the inside, whether clear or fuzzy. The greater clarity you have regarding your values on the inside, the more precise and effective will be your actions on the outside. You can imagine your personality by thinking of a target with concentric rings from the inside to the outside. Your personality is also made up of five rings starting from the center, your values, and radiating outward to the next circle, which is your beliefs. You see, your values determine your beliefs about yourself and the world around you. If you have positive values, such as love, compassion, and generosity, you will believe that people in your world are deserving of these values, and you will treat them accordingly. Your beliefs, in turn, determine the third ring of your personality, your expectations. If you have positive values, you will believe yourself to be a good person. If you believe yourself to be a good person, you will expect good things to happen to you. If you expect good things to happen to you, you will be more positive, cheerful, and future-oriented. You will look for the good in other people and other situations. And surprise, surprise, your expectations will become your realities. The fourth level of your personality, determined by your expectations, is your attitude. Your attitude will be an outward manifestation or reflection of your values, beliefs, and expectations. For example, if your value is that this is a good world to live in and your belief is that you're going to be very successful in life, you will expect that everything that happens to you is helping you in some way. As a result, you will have a positive mental attitude toward other people and they will respond positively toward you. You will be a more cheerful and optimistic person. You will be someone that others want to work with and for and buy from and sell to and generally help to be more successful. This is why a positive mental attitude seems to go hand in hand with great success in every walk of life. The fifth ring or level of your life is your actions. Your actions on the outside will ultimately be a reflection of your innermost values, beliefs, and expectations on the inside. This is why what you achieve in life and work will be determined more by what is going on inside of you than by any other factor. You can tell how a person thinks most of the time by looking at the conditions of their outer lives. A positive, optimistic goal and future-oriented person on the inside will enjoy a happy, successful, and prosperous life on the outside most of the time. You are the very happiest when what you are doing on the outside is congruent with your values on the inside. When you are living in complete alignment with what you consider to be good and right and true, you will automatically feel happy and positive about yourself and your world. Your goals must be congruent with your values, and your values must be congruent with your goals. This is why clarifying your values is often the starting point to high achievement and peak performance. Values clarification requires that you think through what is really important to you in life. You then organize your entire life around these values. Any attempt to live on the outside in a manner that contradicts the values you hold on the inside will cause you stress, negativity, unhappiness, pessimism, and even anger and frustration. So therefore, your chief responsibility to yourself in the creation of a great life is for you to develop absolute clarity about your values in everything you do. Living in alignment with your true values is the royal road to self-confidence, self-respect, and personal pride. In fact, almost every human problem can be resolved by returning to values.
Whenever you experience stress of any kind, look into yourself and ask, in what way am I compromising my innermost values in this situation? There are some insightful ways to help you to determine your true values. First of all, you can look at your past. How have you behaved under pressure in the past? What choices did you make with your time or money when you were forced to choose? Your answers will give you an indication of your predominant values at that time. Dale Carnegie once wrote, Tell me what gives a person his greatest feeling of importance, and I will tell you his entire philosophy of life. What makes you feel important? What raises your self-esteem? What increases your sense of self-respect and personal pride? What have you accomplished in your past life that has given you the greatest sense of pride and satisfaction? These answers will give you good indications of your true values. The spiritual teacher Emmett Fox once wrote about the importance of discovering your heart's desire. What is your heart's desire? What is it that deep down in your heart, more than anything else, you would like to be, have, or do in life? As a friend of mine asked, what do you want to be famous for? What words would you like people to use to describe you when you are not there? What would you like people to say about you when you have passed on? What would you like someone to say about you at your funeral? How do you want your family, friends, and children to remember you? How would you want them to talk about you after you had left this earth? How would you like people to talk to them about you today? What kind of reputation do you have right now? What kind of a reputation would you like to have sometime in the future? And what would you have to begin doing today in order to create the kind of reputation that you desire? Remember, it doesn't matter where you're coming from. All that really matters is where you're going. If you were an outstanding person in every respect, how would you behave toward others? What sort of impression would you leave on others after you had met them and spoken with them? Imagine you could be a completely excellent person. How would you be different from today? In psychology, your level of self-esteem determines your level of happiness. Self-esteem is defined as how much you like yourself. Your self-esteem, in turn, is determined by your self-image. This is the way you see yourself and think about yourself in your day-to-day -day interactions with others. Your self-image is shaped by your self-ideal. Your self-ideal is made up of the virtues, values, goals, hopes, dreams, and aspirations that you have for yourself sometime in the future. Here is what psychologists have discovered. The more your behavior in the moment is consistent with what you feel your ideal behavior should be, the more you like and respect yourself, and the happier you are. Your aim should be to deliberately and systematically create the circumstances that raise your self-esteem in everything you do. You should live your life as though you are already the outstanding person that you intend to be sometime in the future. What are your values today with regard to your work and your career? Do you believe in the values of integrity, hard work, dependability, creativity, cooperation, initiative, ambition, and getting along well with other people? People who live these values in their work are vastly more successful and more highly esteemed than people who do not. What are your values with regard to your family? Do you believe in the importance of unconditional love, continuous encouragement and reinforcement, patience, forgiveness, generosity, warmth, and attentiveness? People who practice these values consistently with the important people in their lives are much happier than people who do not. What are your values with regard to money and financial success? Do you believe in the importance of honesty, industry, thrift, frugality, education, excellent performance, quality, persistence. People who practice these values are far more successful in their financial lives than those who do not, and they're far more successful far faster as well. What about your health? Do you believe in the importance of self-discipline, self-mastery, and self-control with regard to diet, exercise, and rest?
Do you set high standards for your levels of health and fitness and then work every day to live up to those standards? People who practice these values live longer, healthier lives than people who do not. Perhaps the most important value of all is that of integrity. A billionaire once said to me, Integrity is not so much a value in itself, he said. It is rather the value that guarantees all the other values. Wow, this is a great insight for me. Once you've decided that you're going to live consistent with a value, your level of integrity determines whether or not you follow through on your commitment. The more you discipline yourself to live consistent with the very best you know, the greater is your level of personal integrity. And the higher your level of integrity, the happier and more powerful you will feel in everything you do. Truly great men and women are always described as having high levels of integrity. They live their lives consistent with their highest values, even when no one is looking. Mediocre men and women, on the other hand, are always cutting corners and compromising their integrity, especially when no one is watching. Decide today to be a man or woman of honor. Resolve to tell the truth and to live in truth with yourself and other people. Crystallize your values in each area of your life. Write them down. Think of how you would behave if you were living consistent with those values and then refuse to compromise them for any reason. Once you accept complete responsibility for your life and for everything that happens to you and then create an ideal picture of your perfect future and clarify your values, you are now ready to begin setting clear, specific goals in every area of your life. Chapter 5. Determine Your True Goals My favorite word in goal setting, and success in general, is the word clarity. There is a direct relationship between the level of clarity you have about who you are and what you want and virtually everything else you accomplish in life. Superior men and women invest the time necessary to develop absolute clarity about themselves and what they really want, like designing a detailed blueprint for a building before they begin construction. Average people just throw themselves at life, like a dog chasing a passing car, and wonder why they never seem to catch anything or keep anything worthwhile. Earlier I mentioned that intense, burning desire is absolutely essential to the overcoming of obstacles and the achieving of great goals. For your desire to be intense enough, your goals must be purely personal. They must be goals that you choose for yourself rather than goals that someone else wants for you or that you want to achieve to please someone in your life. In goal setting, for the process to be effective, you must be perfectly selfish about what it is that you really, really want for yourself. One of the most important questions in goal setting is this. What do I really want to do with my life. If you could do or be or have anything at all in life, what would it be? Remember, you can't hit a target you can't see. You should return to this question over and over again in the months and years ahead. What do I really want to do with my life? In determining your true goals, you start with your vision, your values, and your ideals. When you begin, these will often feel a bit like fantasies detached from reality. However, now your job is to make them concrete, like designing a dream house on paper. You start with your general goals and then move to more and more specific goals. For example, ask these questions. Number one, what are your three most important goals in your business and career right now? Number two, what are your three most important financial goals right now? Number three, what are your three most important family or relationship goals right now? And four, what are your three most important health and fitness goals right now? The flip side of the above questions is for you to ask, what are my three biggest worries or concerns in life right now? What bothers you 
worries you, concerns you, and preoccupies you in your day-to-day -day life? What aggravates or irritates you? What is robbing you of happiness more than anything else? As a friend of mine often asks, where does it hurt? Once you have identified your biggest problems, worries, or concerns, ask yourself, what are the ideal solutions to each of these problems? How could I eliminate these problems or worries immediately? What is the fastest and most direct way to solve this problem? In 1142, William of Ockham, a British philosopher, proposed a method of problem solving that has come to be referred to as Occam's razor. This way of thinking has become famous and popular throughout the ages. What Occam said was that the simplest and most direct solution requiring the fewest number of steps is usually the correct solution to any problem. Many people make the mistake of overcomplicating goals and problems. But the more complicated the solution, the less likely it is ever to be implemented and the longer the time it will take to get any results. Your aim should be to simplify the solution and go directly to the goal as quickly as possible. For example, many people tell me that they would like to double their incomes. If they are in sales, I ask them, what is the fastest and most direct way to double your income? After they have come up with a series of suggestions, I give them what I consider to be the best answer. Double the amount of time that you spend face-to-face -face with qualified prospects. The most direct way to increase your sales has always been the same. Spend more time with better prospects. If you don't upgrade your skills or change anything else about what you are doing, but you double the number of minutes that you spend face-to-face -face with prospects each day, you will probably double your sales income. In setting goals for your life, short and long term, you should continually ask yourself, what do I most enjoy doing in each area of my life? For instance, if you could do just one thing all day long in your work, what would it be? If you could do any job or full-time activity all the time without pay, what would it be? What sort of work or activity gives you the greatest joy and satisfaction? The psychologist Abraham Maslow identified what he called peak experiences, those moments or times when the individual feels the happiest, most elated, and exhilarated. One of your aims in life is to enjoy as many peak experiences as possible. You achieve this by thinking back and identifying those moments of peak experience in your past, and then by imagining how you could repeat them in your present and future. What have been your happiest moments in life up to now? How could you have more of those moments in the future? What do you really love to do? You should have goals for social and community involvement and contribution as well. Think about what kind of a difference you would like to make in your world. What organizations, causes, needs, or social problems would you like to work on or in? What changes would you like to see? Who is there who is less fortunate than you that you would like to help? If you were independently wealthy, what causes would you support? Most of all, what could you do today to begin making a difference in your world? Don't wait until some future date when everything will be ideal. Instead, start today in some way. One of the most important areas of goal setting is your financial life. If you could earn and accumulate all the money you need, you could probably achieve most of your non-financial goals faster and easier than you can today. So, if your life were ideal, how much money would you like to earn each month and each year? How much would you like to save and invest each month and each year? How much would you like to be worth sometime in the future? What sort of estate would you like to accumulate by the time you retire, and when would you like that to be? Most people are hopelessly confused about their financial goals, but when you become absolutely clear about them for yourself, your ability to achieve them increases dramatically. When you are absolutely clear about what you want, you can then think about your goals most of the time. And the more you think about them, the faster they will materialize in your life. 
The process of asking yourself questions about your goals in each part of your life begins to clarify your thinking and make you a more focused and better defined person. Chapter 6. Analyze Your Beliefs Perhaps the most important of all mental laws is the law of belief. This law says that whatever you believe with conviction becomes your reality. You do not believe what you see, you see what you already believe. You actually view your world through a lens of beliefs, attitudes, prejudices, and preconceived notions. Dr. William James of Harvard said in 1905, Belief creates the actual fact. He went on to say that the greatest revolution of my generation is the discovery that individuals, by changing their inner attitudes of mind, can change the outer aspects of their lives. The worst of all beliefs are self-limiting beliefs. If you believe yourself to be limited in some way, whether or not it is true, it becomes true for you. If you believe it, you will act as if you were deficient in that particular area of talent or skill. Overcoming self-limiting beliefs and self-imposed limitations is often the biggest obstacle standing between you and the realization of your full potential. Self-limiting beliefs, sometimes based on a single experience or a casual remark, can hold you back for years. Almost everyone has had the experience of mastering a skill in an area where they thought that they had no ability and being quite surprised at themselves. Perhaps this has happened to you. You suddenly realize that your limiting ideas about yourself in that area were not based on fact at all. Many people, because of their negative beliefs, most of which are erroneous, falsely consider themselves to be limited in intelligence, talent, capability, creativity, or skill of some kind. In virtually every case, however, these beliefs are false. The fact is that you have more potential than you could ever use in your entire lifetime. The good news about beliefs is that all beliefs are learned. They can therefore be unlearned, especially if they're not helpful. The starting point of unlocking more of your potential is for you to identify your self-limiting beliefs and then ask, what if they were not true at all? What if you were possessed of an extraordinary ability in an area where you didn't think you were very good at all, such as selling, entrepreneurship, public speaking, or money-making? Imagine that there was a belief store, very much like a computer software store, that you could visit and purchase a belief to program into your subconscious mind. If you could choose any set of beliefs at all, which beliefs would be the most helpful to you? Here is my suggestion. Select this belief. I am destined to be a big success in life. If you absolutely believe that you are destined to be a big success, you will walk, talk, and act as if everything that happens to you in life is part of a great plan to make you successful. And as it happens, this is how the top people think in every field. Top people look for the good in every situation. They know that it is always there. No matter how many reversals and setbacks they experience, they expect to get something good out of everything that happens to them. They believe that every setback is part of a great plan that is moving them inexorably toward achieving the great success that is inevitable for them. If your beliefs are positive enough, you will seek the valuable lesson in every setback or difficulty. You will confidently believe that there are many things that you have to learn on the road to achieving and keeping your ultimate success. You therefore look upon every problem as a learning experience. Emmett Fox, the spiritual teacher I mentioned before, once said that your main job in life is to create the mental equivalent within yourself of what you want to realize and enjoy in your outer world. Your focus must be on creating the beliefs within yourself that are consistent with the great success you want to be in your outer world. You achieve this by challenging your self-limiting beliefs, by rejecting them 
and then acting as if they did not exist. You reinforce the development of new life-enhancing beliefs by increasing your knowledge and skills in your field to the point where you feel equal to any demand or challenge. You accelerate the development of new positive beliefs by setting bigger and more exciting goals in every area. Finally, you act continually as if you are already the person that you desire to be. Your aim is to reprogram your subconscious mind for success by creating the mental equivalent in everything you do or say. Your beliefs are always manifested in your words and actions. Make sure that everything you say and do from now on is consistent with the beliefs that you want to have and the person that you want to become. In time, you will replace more and more of your self-limiting beliefs with life-enhancing beliefs. Over time, you will completely reprogram yourself for success. When this occurs, the transformation that takes place in your outer life will amaze you and all the people around you. Chapter 7. Start at the beginning. Imagine that you were going to take a long trip across the country. The first thing you would do would be to choose your destination and then get a road map to determine the very best way to get there. Each day before you started out, you would locate yourself on a map relative to where you are and where you plan to go in the hours ahead. Life is very much the same. Once you have decided upon your values, vision, mission, purpose, and goals, the next step is for you to analyze your starting point. Exactly where are you today and how are you doing? in each of the important areas of your life, especially as they relate to your goals. Jack Welch, the CEO of General Electric for many years, once said that the most important quality of leadership is the reality principle. He defined this as the ability to see the world as it really is, not as you wish it were. He would begin every meeting to discuss a goal or a problem with the question, what's the reality? Abraham Maslow once wrote that the first quality of the self-actualizing person was the ability to be completely honest and objective with himself or herself. It's the same with you. If you want to be the best you can be and to achieve what is truly possible for you, you must be brutally honest with yourself and your point of departure. You must sit down and analyze yourself in detail to decide exactly where you are today in each area. When you begin to plan your long-term future, one of the most valuable exercises you can engage in is called zero-based thinking. In zero-based thinking, you ask this question. Knowing what I now know, is there anything that I am doing today that I wouldn't start up again today if I had to do it over knowing what I now know? No matter who you are or what you are doing, there are certain things in your life that, knowing what you now know, you wouldn't get into again today if you had them to do over. It's difficult, if not impossible, for you to make progress in your life if you allow yourself to be held back by decisions that you have made in the past. If there is something in your life that you wouldn't get into again today, your next question is, how do I get out and how fast? Apply zero-based thinking to the people in your life, both business and personal. Is there any relationship in your life that, knowing what you now know, you wouldn't get into? Is there any person that you have hired, assigned, or promoted that, knowing what you now know, you wouldn't hire back again today? Is there any person that you are working with or for that, knowing what you now know, you wouldn't get involved with again today? Be perfectly honest with yourself when you ask and answer these questions. Examine every aspect of your work life and career. Is there any job that you have taken on that, knowing what you now know, you wouldn't get into? Is there any part of your business or work that, knowing what you now know, you wouldn't start up again? Is there any activity, process, product, service, or expenditure in your business that, knowing what you now know, you wouldn't embark upon again today if you had to do it over? After people and work considerations, look at your investments. Is there any investment of time, money or emotion that knowing what you now know you wouldn't get into again today if you had to do it over? If the answer is no, 
How do you get out? And how fast? Fully 70% of the decisions that you make will turn out to be wrong in the fullness of time. When you made the decision or commitment, it was probably a good idea, based on the circumstances and knowledge of the moment. But now, the situation may have changed and it is time to zero base it, based on the way things are today. You can usually tell if you are in a zero-based thinking situation because of the stress that it causes. Whenever you are involved in something that, knowing what you now know you wouldn't get into, you experience ongoing stress, aggravation, irritation, and anger. Sometimes people spend an enormous amount of time trying to make a business or personal relationship succeed. But if you zero-base this relationship, the correct solution is often to get out of the relationship altogether. The only real question is whether or not you have the courage to admit that you were wrong and then take the necessary steps to correct the situation. When you embark on the achievement of any great goal, you should imagine that at any time you could start your career over again. Never allow yourself to feel locked in or trapped by a particular decision from the past. Keep focused on the future. Many people today are walking away from their educations, their businesses, their industries, and their years of experience and getting into something completely new and different. They are honest enough to recognize that there is a limited future in the direction they are going, and they are determined to get into something where the future possibilities are far greater. You must do the same. In doing a baseline assessment of yourself and your life, you must face the facts, whatever they are. As Harold Janine of ITT once said, Facts don't lie. Seek out the real facts, not the obvious facts, the apparent facts, the hoped-for facts, or the wished-for facts. The true facts are what you need to make good decisions. Take a hard look at your current company and industry. Take a hard look at your current job situation. Take a hard look at your market relative to your competitors. In reinventing yourself, stand back and Think about starting your career over again today, knowing what you now know. Imagine that your job and your industry disappeared overnight. Imagine that you had to make brand new career choices. If you were starting over again today with your special combination of talents and skills, what would you choose to do that is different from what you are doing now? In mentally starting over, as though you were beginning your career anew, look deeply into yourself as well. What good habits do you have that are helping you and moving you toward your goals? What bad habits have you developed that may be holding you back? What are your very best qualities of character and personality? What are your weakest qualities? What new habits and qualities do you need to develop to get the very most out of yourself and what is your plan to begin developing them? What bad habits do you need to get rid of and replace with good habits? There's an old saying, well begun is half done. Doctors say, accurate diagnosis is half the cure. Taking the time to honestly evaluate each part of your situation before you launch toward your goal will save you months and even years on your journey. In many cases, it will force you to reevaluate your goals in the light of superior analysis and knowledge. It will dramatically improve the speed at which you achieve your goals once you get going. Chapter 8. Measure Your Progress you have incredible mental powers that you habitually fail to use to their full extent. Your conscious mind is the head office of your life. Its role is to deal with the information in your environment and then to identify, analyze, and compare it against other information and then to decide what actions to take. But it is your subconscious mind that contains the great powers that can enable you to accomplish vastly more than you ever have before. At least 90% or more of your mental powers are below the surface. It is essential that you learn how to tap into these powers to motivate, stimulate, and drive you forward 
toward the achievement of your goals. Your subconscious mind functions best with clear goals, specific tasks, deliberate measures, and firm deadlines. The more of these with which you program your subconscious computer, the better it functions for you and the more you will accomplish in a shorter period of time. As you set your goals and begin moving toward them, it is essential that you establish a series of benchmarks or measures that you can use to evaluate your progress day by day and hour by hour. The more clear and specific the measures you set, the more accurate you will be in hitting your targets on schedule. Your subconscious mind requires a forcing system composed of deadlines that you have imposed on yourself for task accomplishment and goal attainment. Without a forcing system, it becomes easy for you to procrastinate and delay and to put off important tasks until much later, if at all. There are three keys to peak performance in achieving your goals. They are commitment, completion, and closure. When you make a firm commitment to achieve a particular goal and you put aside all excuses, it is very much like stepping on the accelerator of your subconscious mind. You will become more creative, determined, and focused than ever before. Great men and women are those who make clear, unequivocal commitments and then refuse to budge from them no matter what happens. Completion is the second ingredient in peak performance. There is an enormous difference between doing 95% of a task and doing 100% of a task. In fact, it is very common for people to work very hard up to the 90% or 95% level and then to slack off and delay the final completion of the task. This is a temptation that you must fight against. You must continually force yourself, discipline yourself to resist this natural tendency and push through to completion. Every time you complete a task of any kind, your brain releases a small quantity of endorphins. This natural morphine gives you a sense of well-being and elation. It makes you feel happy and peaceful. It stimulates your creativity and improves your personality. It is nature's wonder drug. The more important the task that you complete, the greater is the quantity of endorphin that your brain releases very much like a reward for success and achievement. Over time, you can actually develop a positive addiction to the feelings of well-being that you receive from this endorphin rush. Even when you complete a small task, you feel happier. When you complete a large task, you feel happier still. When you finish the various steps on the way to the completion of a large task at every achievement, you get an endorphin rush. You feel continuously happy and exhilarated when you are working toward the completion of an important job. Everyone wants to feel like a winner. And feeling like a winner requires that you win. You get the feeling of the winner by completing a task 100%. When you do this repeatedly, eventually you develop the habit of completing the tasks that you begin. When this habit of task completion locks in, your life will begin to improve in ways that you cannot today imagine. In psychology, the reverse is also true. The incomplete action is a major source of stress and anxiety. In fact, much of the unhappiness that people experience is because they have not been able to discipline themselves to follow through and complete an important task or responsibility. If you've ever had a major assignment that you have been putting off, you know what I'm referring to. The longer you wait to get started on an assignment, and the closer the deadline approaches, the greater stress you experience. It can start to keep you up at night and affect your personality. But when you finally launch into the task and push it through to completion, you feel a great sense of relief and well-being. The third C, after commitment and completion, is closure. This is the difference between an open loop and a closed loop. Bringing closure to an issue in your personal or business life is absolutely essential for you to feel happy and in control of your situation. Lack of closure, unfinished business, and incomplete action of any kind are all major sources of stress, dissatisfaction, and even failure in business. They consume enormous amounts of physical and emotional energy. Perhaps the most important ability in the world of work 
is dependability. There is nothing that will get you paid more and promoted faster than to develop a reputation for getting your tasks done quickly and well and on schedule. Whatever your goals, make a list of all the tasks that you will have to accomplish in the achievement of those goals. Put a deadline on every one of those tasks. Then, work every day and every hour to hit your deadlines. Measure your progress each day as you go along. Speed up or slow down where necessary. But remember, you can't hit a target that you can't see. The greater clarity that you have with regard to deadlines and measures, the more you will accomplish and the faster you will get it done. A goal or a decision without a deadline is merely a discussion. It has no energy behind it. It is like a bullet with no powder in the cartridge. Unless you establish deadlines to which you are committed, you will end up firing blanks in life and in work. Sometimes people ask, what if I set a deadline and I don't achieve the goal by the deadline? Simple. Set another deadline. And then another if necessary. Deadlines are best guessed estimates of when the task will be completed. The more you set and work toward deadlines, the more accurate you will become in predicting the time necessary to complete them. You will become better and better at achieving your goals and completing your task on schedule every single time. In each area of your life, analyze your activities carefully and select a specific number that, more than anything else, determines your level of success in that area. Then, focus all of your attention all day long on that specific number. The very act of focused attention will cause you to perform better in that area, both consciously and unconsciously. If you want to be healthier, you could focus on the number of minutes per week that you exercise, or the number of calories per day that you eat. If you want to be successful financially, you can focus on the amount that you earn each hour, or the amount that you save each month. If you want to be successful in sales, you could focus on the number of calls you make each day, or the number of sales, or the size of each sale that you make each month. If you want to be successful in your relationships, you can focus on the number of minutes that you spend face-to-face -face with the most important people in your life each day and each week. You've heard the saying, what gets measured gets done. There's another saying, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. Your ability to set specific measures on your goals and then to keep an accurate record and track your performance each day will assure that you achieve your goals exactly when you have decided to or even before. Chapter 9. Remove the Roadblocks How many times do you think that people try to achieve their new goals before they give up? Well, the average is less than one time. Most people give up before they even make the first try. And the reason they give up is because of all the obstacles, difficulties, problems, and roadblocks that immediately appear as soon as you decide to do something that you've never done before. The fact is that successful people fail far more often than unsuccessful people. Successful people try more things, fall down, pick themselves up, and try again, over and over again, before they win through. Unsuccessful people try a few things, if they try at all, and very soon quit and go back to what they were doing before. You should expect to fail and fall short many times before you achieve your goals. You should look upon failure and temporary defeat as a part of the price that you pay on your road to the success that you will inevitably achieve. As Henry Ford once said, failure is merely an opportunity to more intelligently begin again. Once you have decided upon your goal, ask yourself, why am I not there already? What is holding you back? Why haven't you achieved that goal up to now? Identify all the obstacles that stand between you and your goal. Write down every single thing that you can think of that might be blocking you or slowing you down from moving ahead. Remember, you become what you think about most of the time. In the area of problems and difficulties, successful people have a particular way of thinking that we call solution orientation. Successful people think about solutions most of the time. Unsuccessful people think about problems and difficulties most of the time. 
Solution-oriented people are constantly looking for ways to get over, around, and past the obstacles that stand in their ways. Problem-oriented people talk continuously about their problems, about who or what caused them, how unhappy or angry they are, and how unfortunate it is that they have occurred. Solution-oriented people, on the other hand, simply ask the question, how can we solve this? And then they take action to deal with the problem. Between you and anything you want to accomplish, there will always be problems or obstacles of some kind. This is why success is sometimes defined as the ability to solve problems. Personal leadership is the ability to solve problems. Effectiveness is the ability to solve problems. All men and women who accomplish anything of importance are people who have developed the ability to solve the problems that stand between them and their goals. One of the most important breakthroughs in thinking in the last few decades was described by Elihu Goldratt in his book The Goal as the theory of constraints. This theory says that between you and anything you want to accomplish, there is a constraint or limiting factor that determines how fast you get to where you want to go. For example, if you are driving down the freeway and there is traffic construction that is narrowing all the cars into a single lane, this bottleneck or choke point becomes the constraint that determines how fast you get to your destination. The speed at which you pass through this bottleneck will largely determine the speed of your entire journey. In accomplishing any major goal, there's always a constraint or bottleneck that you must get through as well. Your job is to identify it accurately and then to focus all of your energies on alleviating that key constraint. Your ability to remove this roadblock or deal with this limiting factor can help you move ahead faster than perhaps any other step you can take. The 80-20 rule says that 80% of your constraints will be within yourself. Only 20% of your constraints will be outside of yourself, contained in other people and situations. To put it another way, it is you personally who is usually the major roadblock that is setting the speed at which you achieve any goal that you set for yourself. For most people, this is hard to accept. But superior people are more concerned with what is right rather than who is right or being right. Superior people are more concerned with the truth of the situation and what they can do to solve the problem than they are with protecting their egos. Ask yourself, what is it in me that is holding me back? Look deep within yourself and identify the key constraints in your personality, temperament, skills, abilities, habits, education, or experience that might be holding you back from achieving the goals that you have set for yourself. Ask the brutal questions. Be completely honest with yourself. The primary obstacles between you and your goals are usually mental. They are psychological and emotional in character. They are within yourself rather than within the situation around you. And it is with these mental obstacles that you must begin if you want to achieve everything that is possible for you. The two major obstacles to success and achievement are fear and doubt. It is first of all the fears of failure, poverty, loss, embarrassment, or rejection that holds the average person back from trying in the first place. This is why the average number of times that a person tries with a new goal is less than one. As soon as he or she thinks of the goal, these fears overwhelm him or her and, like a bucket of water on a small fire, extinguishes the desire completely. The second mental obstacle, closely aligned to fear, is that of self-doubt. We doubt our own abilities. We compare ourselves unfavorably to others and think that others are somehow better, smarter, and more competent than we are. We think, I'm not good enough. We feel inadequate and inferior to the challenges of achieving the great goals that we want so much to accomplish. Fortunately, if there's anything good about doubt and fear, it is that they are both learned emotions. Have you ever seen a negative baby? Children come into the world with no doubts or fears at all, and whatever has been learned can be unlearned through practice and repetition. The primary antidotes to doubt and fear are courage and confidence. 
the higher your level of courage and confidence, the lower will be your levels of fear and doubt, and the less effect these negative emotions will have on your performance and behavior. The way that you develop courage and confidence is with knowledge and skill. Most fear and doubt arises out of ignorance and feelings of inadequacy of some kind. The more you learn the things you need to know to achieve your goals, the less fear you will feel on the one hand and the more courage and confidence you will feel on the other. Think about learning to drive for the first time. You were probably extremely tense and nervous and made a lot of mistakes. You may have driven erratically and been a danger to yourself and others. But over time, as you mastered the knowledge and skills of driving, you became better and better and your confidence increased. Today, you can quite comfortably get into your car and drive across the country with no fear or worry at all. You are so competent at driving that you can do it well without even thinking about it. The same principles apply to any skills you need to learn to achieve any goal you can set for yourself. Once you have made a list of all the obstacles that are standing in the way of your achieving your major goals, organize the obstacles by priority. What is the largest single obstacle? If you could wave a magic wand and remove one major obstacle from your path, which one obstacle, if removed, would help you the most in moving ahead more rapidly? Management consultant Ian Mitroff has an interesting set of observations with regard to problem solving and the removal of obstacles. He says that, whatever the problem, define it in several different ways before you attempt to solve it. Beware of any problem for which there is only one definition or one solution. When you ask the question with regard to your goal, why am I not there already, what answer comes to mind? What is holding you back? What is standing in your way? It is at this point that you have to drill down to determine the correct obstacle before you begin taking steps to remove it. You do this by asking the question, what else could be the problem? After each definition of the problem. In the book, The uh, McKinsey Way, describing the management consulting practices of McKinsey and Company, the authors point out that one of the greatest wastes of time and money is in applying the wrong solution to the wrong problem in the first place. This can apply to your problems and obstacles as well. By identifying the constraints or reasons that you are not achieving your personal income goals, each definition leads to a different set of solutions. They require that you think in different ways. In your personal life, it's the same. The accuracy with which you identify the obstacles or bottlenecks that are holding you back will determine the appropriateness of the various steps that you can take to remove or alleviate those obstacles. Once you have determined the major obstacle that is holding you back, rewrite that obstacle as a positive goal. For example, you could now say, my goal is to continually upgrade my skills and abilities so that I am in the top 10% of money earners in my field. You then make a list of all the things that you could do to upgrade your knowledge and skills, improve your time management, increase your efficiency and effectiveness, and make more sales for your company. You set deadlines and measures next to each step in your strategy to achieve excellence in your field. You then select one key task and take action on it immediately. From then on, you hold your own feet to the fire. You become your own taskmaster. You discipline and drive yourself to do the things that you need to do to become the kind of person that you need to become in order to achieve the goals that you have set for yourself. This exercise of identifying what is holding you back and then setting a clear written goal to remove that obstacle puts you back in control of your own life. By following through on your resolution, you virtually guarantee your ultimate success and the achievement of almost any goal you can set for yourself. If you have any questions or concerns about the accuracy of your problem definition, discuss it with someone you know and trust. Put your ego aside. Invite honest feedback and criticism. Be open to the possibility that you have fundamental flaws and weaknesses 
that are standing in the way of your realizing your full potential. Be brutally honest with yourself. Once your problem or obstacle is clear to you, ideas, opportunities, and answers will come to you from various sources. You will begin to attract into your life all kinds of resources that will help you to overcome the obstacle or difficulty, either within yourself or within the situation around you, and move you more rapidly towards your goal. For every problem or obstacle that is standing between you and what you want to accomplish, there is a solution of some kind somewhere. Your job is to be absolutely clear about what sets the speed at which you achieve your goal and then to focus your time and attention on alleviating that constraint. By removing your major obstacle, you will often make more progress in a few months than the average person might make in several years. Chapter 10. Become an Expert in Your Field One of the qualities of top people is that, at a certain point in their careers, they decided to commit to excellence. They decided to be the best at what they do. They decided to pay any price, make any sacrifice, and invest any amount of money necessary to become very good in their chosen fields. And as a result of this decision, they pulled away from the pack of average performers and move themselves upward into the income category where today they earn three, four, five, and even ten times as much as their peers who have not made this commitment. Everyone who is in the top 10% in their field started in the bottom 10%. Everyone who is doing well today was once doing poorly. And even more importantly, 